Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials and for the grade 12s I'm going to continue with two dimensional arrays and we're going to do some processing. So we first need to decide if we maybe need some extra rows or columns if we are going to display the answers of our calculations in our two dimensional arrays in our string grid. This is just an example of saying okay I want to add up all the values here that would be my two dimensional array and I will be displaying them in some extra columns here. So if I had a 2D array with four columns I would have to add a fifth column for the labeling column and then I have to add column 6 and 7 as well to display my processing. This is what I'm doing here in the first line. I'm setting the column counter to 7. And then I'm displaying in column 5, but row 0, total. So that's what I'm seeing up there. And then in the 6th column, but in, still in row 0, I'm displaying the label average. If I needed to display another row at the bottom, I would have to take my counter and add two, one for the column or the row right at the top and then one extra one to be able to display the totals here at the bottom. And then I can display the label total in I count R plus one and that would be the cell here. Here is an example of doing a calculation for your entire array, not just a specific row or column. So I'm calculating the average, so I'll need a running total that I need to initialize above my loop. I'm looping through my rows and my columns, and to this running total I'm adding the mark from my two-dimensional array. Then I created another counter here, uh, because I want to know the average mark, and there were so many rows, but there were four marks for each learner. So I've multiplied my row counter with four, and now I'm calculating the average using this running total divided by I count and that will give me the average. Here I'm adding the label to column 0 and it is below my two dimensional array. Just one cell below that I will see the average. And in column 1 in the same row I'll see this variable that I've calculated above. In this example I want to find the person with the highest mark and I want to keep their name as well as their mark to be displayed later. So I'm looping through my rows and my columns. This is the overall highest mark. And I'm comparing every mark against what was previously stored in iHigh. So I need to initialize iHigh. And what I'm doing is I'm making the first mark in my 2D array. I'm making the highest one together with that person's name. If I now find a mark in my two-dimensional array that is higher as the previous one stored in iHigh, I then replace the name with a new name and I replace the highest mark with the current value in my two-dimensional array. Once these two loops have completed their executions, I then have the highest mark stored in iHigh and I've kept the, highest, the name that goes with that mark in SHigh and I'm able to display it in any object that I prefer. This is now your time to practice. So go back into our marks program and double click on the button summary and see if you can get the output below. Here is the button summary. It's very similar to the examples. The only thing that I did differently in here is I did the calculation for the running total as well as finding the highest mark all in the same for loop. The question then further asked me that if a mark is the same as the highest mark, so there could be more than one learner with this highest mark, I need to display all their names. So I'm building a string here using the hash 10 to create the enter and adding the name if this person had a mark equal to the highest mark. And then here at the bottom I'm just calculating my average and I'm displaying my values in my rich edit. You were also asked to enable the button BTN Red Display. This is because we're actually going to use this value R average later on in the program and it first needs to be populated by this button. 
The question also said that this R average had to be a variable with class scope. That means you need to declare it as a global variable at the top of your program. Now we're getting to a calculation where we do a calculation per row. So the question could say, for example, calculate the average for each learner. Now, if you think about it, the learner's marks are in a row, so therefore it's a row question. And you need to then make sure that you start here with a for loop for the row. For column questions, we're going to start with a for loop for the column. I want to display this output in another column, right next to the learner's name and all their four marks. So I have to have an extra column for my column counter. And then I'm displaying the average year in column 5 and in row 0. That's just the label. So if we have a look here at the code, I'm going to run in my loop. I'm going to run through my rows. And every row I want to start with a new total. So for learner 1, we'll start with 0. And then the moment I go to the second learner, that's when my I row changes to 2 in my for loop. I will start with 0 again. So I'm only adding up inside here as a nested loop. I'm adding up one learner's marks to this total. Still inside of my for loop for the row, I'm then calculating their average. There were 4 marks, so I can divide that total by 4. And I'm displaying this output in the fifth column in the row I'm in. So for the first time I'm looping, I'm displaying learners one, learner 1's average in row 1, column 5, and there I'm displaying their average. And then only do I move to learner 2 and I start with a fresh total. This is now your time to practice. So go into the marks folder, into the button row, and see if you can get this output. This is the menu for my button row. And here I'm displaying the display procedure to display my two-dimensional array in the string grid. And I'm adding three more columns to my string grid because I need one for the label and then two more for each learner to display these values. And here I'm just displaying the labels in the row zero at the end of my columns. This is my for loop to loop through my rows. And then for each new learner, I am setting the total to zero as well as how many of their marks were above 50 to count them. This inner loop is now looping through my columns and it's adding the learners up to a to their marks up to a total so that I can calculate the average year outside of this for loop. And also inside of this for loop, I'm testing and counting how many learners or how many marks each learner had above 50. And then I'm outputting these values inside of my string, string grid. Here is an example of a column question. So for our example, they could have asked us to display the average for each term. So each term was stored in a column. So therefore, I need to start with a for loop for the column. I need to add 2 to my row to make space for my label and the values of these averages. And I start with this for loop and I initialize each new term with 0 for I total. And on the inside, I now loop with my for loop for the row and add the marks for that term together. Here I'm still on the inside of my for loop for the column and I'm cal calculating the average. I count R holds the number of learners, so that would be the number of marks I've added for that term. And then here I'm just displaying after the display of your two-dimensional array in the next row. I'm displaying the average inside of the cell where I column is now going to be 1 for the first time that this loops. When I loop again, uh, I total starts with 0 again and this will now be the calculation for term 2. This example here is determining which mark is the highest for each learner. Now for each learner is a row question, so I'll start with a for loop for the row. On the inside of this begin and end for my for loop for my row, I initialize i high to be my current person. So the first time it loops, it will be the learner in position one. His 
first mark is the highest one. My nested loop here for I call starts at 2. You can start it at 1, but then in here it's going to compare the first mark of the first person or every other person to itself. So it will still work, but it is more efficient to start here at 2 and go all the way to the fourth mark. Every mark is then compared to the previous highest one. And if I find a mark that is higher than the previous one, I then store that mark as I high. Before I now move on to the next learner, I need to do something here with I high. So it depends on the question. You could maybe write it to a text file, display it in a rich edit or in your string grid. In this case, I have an array declared with five columns and I'm storing their highest mark in the fifth column. So for person one, while I row is one, their mark will be stored in the array position one and then five as the column. This is now your time to practice again, so press pause. I'll show you the memo soon. Here is the memo for the button um, columns, and I'm setting up the number of rows that I need. I need one extra for the row headings, and then I need three extra ones to display the average and the lowest values for each term. And here, I, uh, since it's a term question, I will have to start with a for loop for the column because my terms are stored in the columns and I'm initializing every total. I'm setting the first mark of the person to the lowest mark as well as I'm keeping their name, the, the person's name in S low. Now, now I'm going to go through every other row and I'm going to add up the total to calculate the average. This is the average for the term and then I'm comparing their mark against the previous lowest value for this column. If I find that a mark is lower than the previous lowest one, I then store their mark and I also store their name. And yet at the bottom just before the end of my for loop for the column, I'm calculating the average and displaying it and I'm also displaying the lowest name and the lowest mark for that term. Well, we've done some calculations, but there is more to come in two-dimensional array, so I hope to see you soon.